Today I'm going to do an elution on this patient specimen right here. It's um, already been spun and I'm going to pull the plasma off first into a tube. And then I'm going to pull out the um, red blood cells, the packed red blood cells. I want to have a mill a milliliter of packed blood cell, red blood cells in order to get this um, started. So let's pull out a mill. I'm going to go all the way down into the bottom. I want to make sure you don't go all the way to the bottom so that it doesn't pull out up into your uh, test, sorry, your um, transfer a pipette. This one's having a little bit of an issue. Okay, so when you go all the way down to the bottom, you want to make sure that you first have your bulb of your pipette squeezed. Okay, so I'm putting, I'm putting those red cells into the tube. So this is what one mil of red cells looks like in the tube. Okay, these ha don't have any saline in them at all. Okay, it's packed red blood cells. We're going to cap this back up and put these off to the side. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first wash the patient red cells with saline and then I'm going to wash them four times with the working wash solution that we, re we prepared previously. Okay, so I uh, will put this into the serofusion and get back to you. Okay, so each time you're washing your cells, you'll end up, you know, having a lot in there and that's not the kind of button that you can really pour off. So what I'm doing is using a pipette to, to pull this off instead of dumping them down the sink. Um, because I was having a hard time keeping the red cells all the way in the bottom and not losing them. Okay, so uh, don't be nervous about doing that. That's what you've got to do. That's what you got to do. All right, so that was the first wash with the saline. Um, now I'm going to be washing with the actual um, wash that we made from the Aleutian kit. And you do it the same way you do others. Um, make sure that you don't touch that um, pipette to any part of the inside of the tube or the specimen because you don't want to contaminate the wash solution. And that way everybody else can use it too. All right, I will finish my washing and then I will tell you what happens after that. Okay, so secretly I have been performing the elution on two specimens unbeknownst to you and that's because I wanted to do one that is um, a small that's going to yield a smaller number of red cells versus the um, higher number of red cells. Now at the end of the four washes you're supposed to take part of the um, part of the supernatant out and save it. And the reason, so we save the last wash, and the reason we do that is for QC purposes, um, and that is going to show um, if there is any antibody in that last wash, it just shows that you didn't do a very good job um, in performing the wash steps.
45 to 60 seconds. So 45. Oh, you know what? We'll do um, we'll do 50 instead. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> well, oh my goodness. Today is bad. Whenever you have that problem, just press the zero. Sorry about that. So we're just going to do 50 and then start there. So you want to centrifuge those tubes as soon as possible when you add the eluding solution um, because prolonged exposure to that eluding solution is going to cause hemolysis in the red blood cells. And if you actually have hemolysis, you're going to have a release of that hemoglobin and it's going to change the um, pH of the actual solution. And you don't want that because we want to have um, a pH that is neutral and then we can um, take it down with the um, other solutions that we have. So it is ending now. I will get them out and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're going to remove that supernatant and put it into a new tube that is called Eluit. Okay. So, I want to make sure, I'm not really going to be able to do this very well on camera. I want to make sure not to have the red blood cells in there uh, because we're actually going to get rid of the red cells that are left after we pull all of this off. So I'm going to throw, throw these into Sharps container now. And I'm going to pull out the little tiny one. Look how, look how little that is. Okay, so we're putting that in there and we're gonna get rid of that. So before we continue on, let's talk about what we've already done. Okay, so we started out with our specimens. Um, we washed the red cells first with saline, then we washed them with the working wash solution that we had and it's a buffered solution, okay? And then we added our eluding solution, which this is the acid, okay, that we added in order to break the um, antibodies away from the red cell antigens. So right now what we have is an acidic elution, or eluate rather, the supernatant that we pulled off. Now we're going to add the buffering solution to bring to bring this um, solution back up to um, close to neutral in order for the, oh my goodness, you can't really see it because it's not focusing, um, in order to bring the pH back up to um, the, the pH that would allow, or neutral, that would allow the um, immunoglobulin to actually do its duty uh, when we go and test it on the antibody identification panel. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to mix this, okay, and we're going to open it up first to see if it's blue. If it's not blue, then we can't use it. Oh, hey, it's blue. Woohoo. Let me see, blue in there. Okay, so if it's blue, that means that it is at the appropriate pH. Okay, and it's going to then pull our pH up in the eluit that we have. And that is going to hopefully bring it up to between 6.4 to 7.6 because blood is supposed to be pH of 7.4. Okay, so we're going to do the um, one that we had a lot of first uh, because that seems to be pretty much on the nose of the procedure that we've been working with. So. Um, since that's the case, we're going to take one mil of the buffer solution and add it to the eluit. And we want to see it change color from yellow to, um, to blue. 
Okay, so right now, let's see what we've got. We haven't, oh, look at that. We haven't gone up all the way yet as to um, it being one mil, but if it doesn't end up turning blue by the end of that one mil, you can add, oh my goodness, you can add more to it one drop by one drop in order to see that once you mix it, it turns a pale blue and remains blue. Well, in person, it's going blue, but on the camera, it's not. So we're gonna add a little bit more, make sure that we are really going blue here. Okay, so that's that procedure. So one drop at a time. I'm gonna add three drops and then mix it. It's really strange that this camera is not picking up that blue color. <laughs> okay, I'll add a little bit more, see if it turns for you all. There, there is a color change, it's just not showing very well on the camera. This is very strange. Okay, well it is, it is a light blue over here, so I'm gonna leave it at that. It looks really nasty brown right there, but whatever. Okay, so now we're going to do to the little guy. And again, we didn't have a whole lot in there, so we're just gonna add as much as it takes in order to turn this guy blue, which looks like it's not gonna take very long. I guess that's a little difficult since I have it in a blue rack. Okay, we're gonna add a little bit more. This is almost like a titration. I'm just not using really precise equipment. Oh, there we go. There we go. That showed up nicely, not the other one. Okay, so we'll keep that. So the next thing we have to do then is go ahead and, oh, you can see the blue now. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so um, the next thing we do now is go ahead and put it into the centrifuge, our centrifuge and um, spin it to get rid of any cellular debris. And once we do that, the eluate is then able to be tested just, um, just on the um, antibody identification panel so that we can find out what that IgG antibody actually is that was on our original red cell. So the little tiny amount one were check cells that we used because we know that that reagent has uh, IgG antibody um, already bound to the red blood cells that are in the, t in the tube. So that's what we used for the little one. And then uh, for the big one, we're just using a regular patient specimen. So the DAT that we did in that other video is on the check cells. Okay, and um, you can even confirm that those results are correct by looking at the check cell label. It says that they're IgG sensitized uh, red blood cells. So um, what I'm gonna do after this is I'm going to put the eluit uh, part, so the supernatant, I'm gonna put it in a nice new tube that's labeled um, with the patient's um, identification on it and then what it is and then uh, we'll test it on an antibody identification panel. Again, I am not going to do a video on that uh, because I've already done identification videos um, and I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So 
we're going to take out any RVCs. Look at that. That's got some RVCs in it. And remember, we're also still saving that last wash too. Okay. So this was the last wash of the big one. And the last wash of the little one is right here. Okay. I use those as balances. Okay. So that's it. Um, let me label those tubes and show you that I'm doing that. And then that's going to be it. Okay. So the tube is labeled as test eluit. All right. So let's pull off all of this eluit. No, oh, you can't see it. There we go. And then we're just going to discard the rest. Okay. With the if it's contaminated with red blood cells. Okay, so we'll get rid of that one in a sharps container. And let's pull this one off. So I'm saving, I'm gonna put this one in a new tube too, but that's the last wash and the eluit. And then this is gonna be, the test eluit here for the check cells. So we'll finally figure out what is on those check cells, but we're not going to tell you because that would make it so that students in my class will already know the answers. That's not good. <laughs> All right. So, um, like I said, I'm going to put this one in a new one, take it away from its red blood cells. So that's it. Um, we will save these and do the testing on them. I hope you enjoyed the acid elution and, um, Please subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time. Have a great day. Bye.